Abby has been my best friend since we've been kids. We grew up living a few houses away from each other. Since the moment we met, we became inseparable. I've known that I've loved her for a long time, but only recently I realized that I was in love with her. At first, I thought it would be better to keep that fact a secret. Soon it became clear this would come out in one way or another. I was never good at hiding anything from her. I decided that I would tell her on my own terms. After I told her everything, it would be different. She would either feel weird about our friendship, or by some miracle she would feel the same way about me. We lived near a small forested area with a large pond in the middle. There was a dock that we often went to just to hang out, to sometimes skip class if we felt like it. In a month, we would be graduating high school, and I felt like it was a good time to come clean on my feelings. Since we both loved the dock, I figured that might be the best place to go to break the news. She gladly agreed to hang out and we started towards the park. Just before we went back onto the trail, we saw a man that was somewhat of a local fixture. He walked around and cleaned up garbage from the side of the road. He took in bottles and cans for money but, because he was already picking up trash, he cleaned up whatever he came across. Abby was a little frightened of him. He was bone thin and did some prison time. Normally dressed in well-worn but mostly clean clothing, he didn't seem like the type of person that we should talk with. I had no issue with him and kind of respected him for cleaning up the area. He was just walking out of the woods with a nearly full clear trash bag. It took me a few seconds to remember his name. What are you girls up to? Taking a hike? He asked when he was close enough to speak with us. I could never place his accent. It was faint. Once I noticed it, I was super bothered at trying to figure it out. Just going for a short walk, Mr. Kendall. The high school students knew him because he would do everyone a favor and clean up after any big parties. Despite his appearance, he was an alright guy. I wondered what mistake in his past got him in prison in the first place. Be careful, alright? The woods feel bad today. Plus, they're in those, uh, what are they? The yipping thing. Coyotes? Yeah, you heard some. Come back out soon. Abby kept her distance when we spoke and I don't think he blamed her. A lot of people didn't get close to him. At least he was a good enough of a person to worry about us. In all my years of living in the area, I've never seen a coyote but I knew that they lived in the woods. We'll be careful. Thank you, Mr. Kendall. Yes, thank you, Abby added. She didn't look as wary as before. I think she was always so freaked out by him because they had never actually talked to each other before. He gave us a worried look but continued on down the road looking for more cans. We should have listened to him and stayed out of the woods. As we walked, we spoke about the current drama within our friend group and our future plans. We had took this path a hundred times before, so we didn't even pay attention to where we were headed. Don't you think we'll have enough money to move in with each other after school? Abby asked me when we brought up future goals. I wanted nothing more than to live with her, but I didn't think she would want anything to do with me after that night. I hope so. I've been saving whatever I've got for my job, I told her. I only had a part-time job and delivered newspapers before school. It wasn't much, but at least it was something to start with. Abby opened her mouth to speak when she heard a noise. Her hand flew into mine as we both looked around, trying to locate the source. It was a thumping sound, one that echoed through the trees. We stopped dead on the trail, wondering what the heck could have made a noise like that. 
Do you think a tree fell over? I offered. No, I've heard trees falling. It's more cracking than a big thud. Abby said, trying to keep her voice even. Another thud came and we both jumped. After a few more coming ever closer, I decided my confession could wait. Whatever that noise was, we did not want to find out. Um, time to go, I asked her, and she nodded her head and confirmed it. Still, with her hand in my own, I turned to walk back the way that we came, and thought that I went blind for a few seconds. Abby let out a yelp of surprise as we stood in the dark. It was later in the day, but it was impossible for the sun to set so quickly. As my eyes adjusted, I could see a full moon high above it, shining through the trees. It gave us enough light to see by. What in the world? I asked, voice low. Abby already had her phone out, trying to get some helper to check the time, but it refused to work at all. Might as well have been a brick it was that useful, and mine was acting up as well. As scary as the sun suddenly going away, we were still in a pretty good spot. I knew where on the trail we had stopped. If we just kept walking, we would be out of the woods in a few short minutes. This doesn't make any sense, she said, looking around the dark trail. I took her hand again to help her start moving. We couldn't afford to stop. I heard another thumping noise and it motivated us to move faster. No matter how far we walked, it felt like we were going nowhere. I was starting to get very scared but needed to keep it together for her. Those thumping noises kept echoing around us. As more time passed and we didn't get to the end of the trail, I found that I could gather up my courage enough to turn my head towards the noise. What I saw would remain in my nightmares forever. At first, I thought I saw someone hanging in the trees. I saw a pale figure dressed in white, their feet dangling. The thumping sound was the wind blowing the body against the tree. I felt sick and the sight made me freeze in my tracks. As the sky cleared of clouds and more moonlight came through the leaves, I could see more figures in the branches bumping against the bark. Abby let out a choked sob when she saw what I was staring at. But something was wrong. I didn't see any rope that the bodies were being hanged with, and I didn't see any heads. If there was no rope, then how were those bodies in the air like that? My skin crawled and I wanted to get the heck out of there. I tugged on Abby's hand for us to get moving again. I don't know if it was because we had moved, or if it was random, but the bodies started to turn towards us. I didn't want to stick around. I was nearly dragging Abby as we bolted down the path. As we ran, I heard those bodies following us. I was brave enough to look over my shoulder once to see them just floating in the treetops. They bounced off anything in their way, limp and mostly silent. I heard their clothing rustling through the air as they floated around. Abby was trying her best not to cry. I was in such a state of shock that I nearly gave in to sobs myself. We had just been walking on a safe trail and now, for whatever reason, a dozen floating headless bodies were coming after us. I didn't understand this. Nothing made sense. I just wanted to tell my best friend how I felt about her. I should have said it sooner so at least I wouldn't bring regrets to my grave. One of the bodies swooped down, its feet brushing against my hair. Abby let out a yelp from seeing it. I thought that it was a miracle when I saw someone on the trail down the way from us. We had both pushed through ragged breaths from running so hard to go and catch up to him, only to regret our choice very shortly after. He was tall and I assumed he wore a tan jacket before we got closer. 
The air shifted and brought a rotting, yet fiery scent. The figure turned towards us and we both let out a scream. It was so thin that we could see every bone in its body. A sheet tied around its waist and flowers around its neck, but no head. That tall figure looked and smelled like a headless, rotting corpse. We both skidded to a stop to stay away from this new thing, the floating bodies getting closer. I held into Abby and helped her duck as more of them swooped down and narrowly missed us. The corpse walked towards us with long strides. In one hand, it held a long pole with a hook at the end. Using the pole, it swatted some of the bodies away. If I wasn't so scared, I would have laughed at the image. We started to back away as the new creature came towards us. Abby was snatched from my arms as the monster hooked her waist with the pole and dragged her forwards. I quickly grabbed her again to try and get her back to me, but this thing was far too strong. We cried, begging it to spare us, and I begged it to at least spare Abby. All the while, I heard more thumping sounds above us. When it unhooked the pole to grab her arm, I took that as my chance to swoop in, and I ran away with her. I felt the hook catch the back of my shirt, but it just ripped, letting us go free. Now we had a new monster following us, and with no plan, we ran, the forest changing around us to a place that we didn't recognize. I thought that I saw the sky getting lighter, and my heart leapt into my chest, hoping that we had found a way out. But suddenly, the woods shifted and I found us right in front of a drop-off. We stopped just in time. Sweat dripping from our faces and our lungs burning. There is a hill in front of us that was not a part of the area. The woods were far too small for a hill like this. And for how high up we were, we should be able to see some houses. But instead, just dark woods as far as we could see. Do you... Abby said, but too out of breath to keep speaking... I knew what she meant. She wanted to see if we had gotten away. I turned to answer her question and saw that the corpse easily followed us. Being so distracted by the drop-off, we didn't hear or see it. Extending the pole out in front of him, he hooked my ankle to pull my foot from underneath me. I fell back and off the hill, with Abby still holding on to me. We both tumbled down, expecting to die from the fall. I was scared but also angry that it was such a lame way to go out. I closed my eyes and held on to my friend as tightly as I could. The fall felt like years but the impact wasn't all that painful. It was as if we had simply tripped. Sitting up and utterly confused, we found ourselves back on the trail, the sun orange around us. I heard voices and was frightened at first, and then I saw a pair of officers were coming towards us. They quickly looked us over for any injuries, and we found out that we had only been missing for under an hour. They walked us out of the woods and I spotted Mr. Kendall waiting. He looked relieved that we were safe. He said that he had heard screaming, and since you two hadn't come out yet, he called us. One of the officers explained. We gave them a weak excuse of seeing a coyote and getting scared by it. So we screamed and ran off into the woods. After all, who would believe what we really saw? We thanked Mr. Kendall for calling for help, and he gave us a knowing look, but didn't outright say that he knew what was really in those woods. When we were finally able to walk home, 
Abby was still holding my arm, shaking up over the entire situation. When we go on our first date, it should be something really normal after this. She said in a tired voice. Yeah, we... Wait. You knew. I almost felt betrayed, but any negative feelings went away as she smiled up at me. You are always bad at hiding things from me.